coach, a really good first half for your team. But as you got into the second half, just how difficult was it to try to hold down the Clippers with just the size they have and the depth they have in scoring? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a reason they're the best third quarter team in the league. And, uh, you know, they came out and they played, played like a team that's a, a championship contender, um, even without, you know, a player in Paul George. Um, you know, they kind of overwhelmed us with physicality, I thought, in that third quarter. Um, you know, it's uh, they took us out of some of our actions. Um, and then, you know, we found some, you know, a little bit in the fourth, but, you know, it's still, we, we didn't we didn't find, find enough. Uh, you know, and then when it comes, you know, comes to the defensive end, um, hey, Kawhi, Kawhi got going. And, uh, you know, you, you throw, you know, some double teams at him in different areas. And I mean, he's, he's just so efficient, you know, with what he does and, and how he makes plays for his teammates um, in those positions. John, go ahead. Ryan, just how did Cat look, you know, his first game back and what kind of effect did you see he had on the team in general? Yeah, I, th I thought he, he did a number of positive things. Um, you know, it, uh, we need to shore up and, and, you know, really key in on the details, you know, to the offense again, you know, with him coming back in, into the fold because um, it does change things a little bit too, especially as, you know, you, you, you become more of a post-up team too. Um, and, you know, guys got to get back used to playing with that. Um, so, you know, it, it, uh, it didn't look, you know, as, as sharp as it probably could have, um, but I expected that. But I thought he, you know, he competed. Um, he had, you know, his win was good. Um, you know, 18 and 10, you know, coming back from a layoff like he did, um, you know, was a good night for him. And I, one of the adjustments it looked like the Clippers made coming out in the second half, they were basically – Darren Josh to shoot how do you kind of balance you know wanting to have him play with confidence but also when the defense is clearly geared that way and he's not knocking those down it kind of can have an effect on the rest of what you're doing uh, it definitely did it definitely did in that situation you know we need guys to make shots um you know we love Josh for what he what he can bring to us in the defensive end especially too but um you know we need we need to be able to make guys pay when they, when they do that. Um, but it also, you know, it can turn into a drive and kick situation, um, you know, for the rest of the group. Chris, go ahead. Ryan, Nas was your leading scorer tonight. And with Pat coming back and, you know, soon I'm guessing he'll be up to his full complement of minutes. How do you make room for Nas and, and potentially playing him and Cat together, just given how, how well Nas has played of late? Yeah, I mean, I, I probably got to find more time for Noms and those guys and cats play together. So, you know, Nas is playing well. And, uh, yeah, probably got to find more time. Chase, go ahead. Ryan, what have you thought of Josh's defensive performance this season? Um, you know, I think think like anyone, it's been, been up and down. Um, you know, we asked Josh to do a lot. You know, it, it, the, uh, there was a trip at one point, you know, as we were, we were, we went out West and we played the Lakers twice. We played, you know, Portland, we played Utah, you know, we, we called the all-star trip for him. I mean, the way he was getting matched up with Donovan, which with Miller, you know, and, and then it, it adjusted. Then one night he was, uh, he was matched up with Davis, uh, Davis and LeBron, then matched up to Kawhi. So we're asking a lot of the judge, but, um, I think we can all be better. And, uh, you know, it needs to be for, for a full 48, especially against a team like this. And then Ant seemed to put together a really solid first half, a little bit more quiet in the second. Did you see them defend him any differently? Did he maybe not attack the same way he did in the first half? Yeah, I mean, I think just as a group, he didn't attack the way the way we did. Um, I thought the switching, um, you know, we got to be sharp, more sharp, you know, in our cuts, in our slips to the basket, those situations. Rick, go ahead. Ryan, it seemed like uh, obviously they were a lot more physical to start the second half. And some of that is obviously just bigger, you know, stronger bodies. But isn't there something about positioning when you're playing physically, knowing, you know, where to position yourself and how to rub off pick and roll and how to rotate hard? And I mean, is that part of what happened tonight, too, for you guys? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think so. You know, you. you you look at their group and they got, you know, defensive player of the year and, and, you know, Pat Beverly, who's been an all defensive 
you know, team uh, member for, you know, most of his career. And then you, you throw in the veteran guys that they have as well. You know, they, they sensed, you know, I thought we played well in the first half. They sensed us playing well, had, had some confidence, and, you know, they, they did turn it up a little bit. And with that, though, you know, those are seasoned guys that understand, you know, the body position aspect of things. You know, we weren't able to get any type of back cuts, even when they were overplaying, just because they were so strong and solid in their, um, in their details. Um, so I, I definitely know what's saying. Uh, one other quick thing. It seems like J Mac and Nas, ever since they both came up from Iowa, really have kind of a telepathic connection, especially getting downhill on the pick and roll. Is that something, even with a healthy team, that you can exploit uh, just because they're such a good pair? Or do you think that's just a sometime thing? Yeah, no, I do think that is something. And, um, you know, it, it's uh, J Mac and Nas, like you said, you know, they spent a number of uh, a lot of time together. Um, you know, in Iowa and here, here in Minnesota, you know, when we, when we go through our development phase with our young, young players, like we did more, more so last year with guys that weren't playing a whole lot, um, you know, early in the season. So, you know, those guys do have a good connection. I do think it's something that, you know, if we do get have an opportunity to see those guys in extended minutes together um, that you would look at more, you know, especially as J-Mac finds a rhythm. Uh, we'll go Eric and then Mark. Eric, go ahead. What's up, Coach? How you doing? Obviously, being part of a professional is being able to play through things, being able to, you know, go through situations. So a cat coming back from his situation, from you as a coach, how, how have you adapted from understanding what he went through and still coaching him hard enough to understand, you know, that you guys are still trying to win games? How has that balance been for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's something that you talk about early in the year. Um, you know, I'm a believer in getting, you know, being up front. And, uh, you know, that's always been cat in my relationship. Uh, when it comes to, you know, coaching hard, but also, you know, understanding that, you know, you got to be honest with me as, you know, I, the loss of, of a loved one, the loss of, of, you know, somebody like your mother, um, especially someone as special as uh, Jackie was, um, you know, we're, we're here, you know, to, to help, but also, you know, the best way to honor her is, is to perform at an elite, elite level and uh, to con continue to live, you know, the way he has lived his life. And, um, so there is a balance to that, but, uh, you know, I think he, like I, I've said before, he's a professional and uh, he understands that, that uh, you know, he, he needs to give everything he has and sometimes that is hard coaching. Thanks, Coach. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, moving forward, to what extent is there still kind of a monitoring of workload and other things uh, for Cat, just, you know, given this is his first game back? Yeah, there will still be a mon um, you know, for workload. Uh, you know, monitoring, you know, I guess kind of system that we, you know, had in place. Um, but, you know, we do that for everybody. Um, and I'd say most teams in the league do that as well. So, you know, as, as time goes on, you know, minutes usually, you know, incrementally uh, move up. Um, but, you know, it's, it's about, you know, how long you can be effective in your stints. You know, is it a six-minute stint? Is it an eight-minute stint? Can you play a whole quarter? Um, you know, not many guys in the league can do that, you know, at, at such a high level. Um, we saw one of them tonight in quad, so, uh, but it's, um, you know, it's definitely something we're monitoring.